So, if you're struggling to actually run your test with just VS Code and React, in this particular video, I'm going to give you the best combination and the best setup that you can do to make just work really perfectly with VS Code and React in the middle just to make them work in harmony in a really good way with good extension, good practices, and what you need to follow along in order to make sure you're actually doing it the right way. So Jest is really this really delightful and small, awesome, and really, really shiny testing framework that really works fine with React, uh, maybe TypeScript and JavaScript and plenty of other different frameworks and libraries, but we're going to focus about React since we're mostly React developers and we care about like, a lot React. Okay, so just as we all know it, it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy. But on this one, we're going to just like see best practices and what are the best stuff that you can do to make just really work really well with React and what are the practices you need to follow along, plus on how to make it work really, really well in your advantage with VS Code. So to get started with Jest or to set up Jest, there are two different ways that you can do. The first one is actually to use the create React app, which is the easiest way and the straightforward way. And you're going to have no issues absolutely to get started with this. And if you have like, you know, no project, you're just going to set start with this and you want to just like learn it. I really advise you to go with the create React app CLI to set up just and start working with it. So simply what you need to do is actually go ahead and do npx create dash react dash up. And obviously you can just use a template. Maybe you want to use TypeScript. You can do that right here. And you can just like you name yourself like react application, whatever. And after this one, the CLI is going to install just for you. It's going to install all the testing framework, the test or the React testing library is going to be installed as well. And it's going to, you know, set up everything for you. So you can just get started with Jest and React and start testing right off the bat. In the other hand, if you want to just like, you know, get started from scratch and you don't want to use the Create React app or you already have a project, but you want to include Jest on, well, you're going to find some issues because it depends on the parcel you're using, like the bundler, maybe Webpack, parcel, um, you know, roll up, whatever you want to use it in here. You have to specifically set up for that particular bundler and you have to specify just configs and, and plenty of stuff. So it's actually a big of a deal to go ahead through that. So I really advise to go through documentation. There's different stuff and documentation is really, really straight to the point. So I've got two projects in here. One is actually the Query React app. It's actually a bare minimum project that has nothing and it has been created using the Query React app CLI and everything. So I haven't put anything or a lot of tests, only a single test file on here and just, you know, how it works in here. Okay. And I got another project and this particular project is very headed in, over into it. Uh, we're going to find this is actually a Twilio's open source project. So I've, I cloned this. It's an open source project. It's a really big project. It has tons and tons of different test files and different configuration, everything. So we tried to compare both of these projects from the simplest one and the simplest approach from like a beginner, very small project into a really advanced project and try to see the best practices and what you can do to improve and what like the best practices or the best guidelines that you need to follow along, you know, to make sure that you are doing it the right way. So on the Query React app, if you head over to the pack.json, you're going to find a different script. So usually the Query React app uses the React script and the React script has already the configuration, has everything behind the scenes for running the Jest test. So all you have to do is basically just do um, react dash scripts, then just run the test command in here and you are ready to go. So this is the basic stuff. And this is the Query React app. It doesn't have much of customization or whatever, but you can of course go ahead and create a configuration file for it. If you want to go to the advanced Stuff, but mostly this will work right at the bat without any problems. So if you head over, as you see, I have some extension running in here, but I don't care about that. So if I head over, I got some application running. So I'm going to create another uh, bash terminal in here and need to make sure that, oh, we are actually running it right. So you need to simply just go ahead and run the actual script. So you just do yarn test and this will go ahead and start the testing for you. So as you see, since I only got a single test file, so this named app.test.tsx and the test has been passed. There is actually just like you know zero snapshots we are not using any snapshots and it's going to run a watch command by default in the other hand for the other projects this is a little bit more advanced projects and has advanced configuration and everything so if you head over pack.json you are very much flexible with jest and react so you can do that the basic way you want it to do so running just in here and jest it doesn't actually have any command lines so that means we've already got a configuration so we can go to jest.config.js which We've put all the configuration together right in here. Like what are the root folder that just is going to run against like, you know, where your test files are stored. Uh, maybe what is the transformer. So we want to use just 
or TypeScript JS in here to run that, uh, maybe the rejects in here to run it, the file extensions and different, different, different stuff that you want to do. So if you're a beginner with Jest and you really want to like learn the syntax and then you're still not really familiar with the syntax, how to put tests together, test suits, what is described and how to, you know, test the basic results and a different truthy stuff from booleans to integers and different stuff. I really advise you with this particular sheet sheet in here on the GitHub. So it's called just sheet sheet. You can just go in and like Google out. It's going to find it the first one. Uh, and it's really, really nice. I've been just putting this as reference in my second monitor and always been using this whenever I'm feeling I'm lost or I need to check out the documentation. It's actually a lot easier, a lot simpler and really straight to the point. Okay, so let's go and get started and try to write our first test in here and try to write some test using the testing library, the react testing library plus Jest. So first things first, you need to notice that the actual convention for naming a test file. So the convention is usually your module is named like, for example, up typescript in here or TSX, what you need to do is actually use the same name. So up, you name it the same file name or the module name, then you append test typescript. So this way it just knows, oh, you're referring to this particular package. So it knows the source file and the test files and it keeps them track and it, and it knows really, really well with that. All right. So in the simple approach of the test file in here, you need to import different stuff of obviously react and maybe you know use the testing li library of react in here and if you're not familiar with the testing library it's basically what allows you to render like shallow render or whatever in just like a particular environment and get the result back so you can test so you can render your react components and then test react components like finding text finding images making sure images are aligned together making sure the style is matching that particular images and so on and so forth. So for this one particularly, you want to use with a describe. So a describe in here. So actually, you see, I can put a describe, or I, I can use something like. Um, so I can do describe, and the describe in here, you can it can take a name or whatever. So something like I don't know, um, you know, React application or whatever React up, and it takes a callback. So I can just go ahead and put the callback right through. So describe will actually just describe a set of tests. So that's why it's called a test suit. So whenever you have a describe, this is actually a test suit. Okay. And inside of it, you want to have individual tests that test different units of your application. So you have like, you know, individual stuff. I'm going to go through this really, really quickly. I'm not going to go into the details. So for example, I'm going to test in here, maybe, I don't know, like a tests, um, uh, renders text or you know, let me just go ahead and do that. So I got the first test in here. So what I want to do first is actually to make sure that I render so I can go ahead and do render and actually I want to render my application. So there you go. So to put that in perspective, I put that like on the, the right side in here, what is the actual application? What is the actual UI? We're going to be testing. So this is what we got in here. I got just a simple text on top and it got three different images aligned horizontally. That's it. That's the actual application. That's what we're going to be testing. So I want to first make sure that the test exists or the actual text exists on the top in here and it matches react testing. So first let's go ahead and match the actual element. So I'm going to do uh, text and I'm going to use screen variable. So I'm going to do get by text. Okay. And I want to just like put the text that I want to get in, in there, which is react testing. That's it. Then I want to use Jest to do accept. So I can do accept text to be um, you know, to have a particular value, like what is the actual value that it needs to have, or what you can actually do is actually do like to be in documents, that would be a better approach. So to make sure, oh, this particular element that has this particular text that does exist on this particular document to be truthy. Simple. So that's basically our first test. And we actually wrote that in a pretty simple way. So as soon as I control S, remember the watch is already running. And there you go, we got a single test pass away. And that is actually looking absolutely fine. Now, if we jump to our other projects, which is the Twilio projects in here, which has a lot of tests set before a lot of components, a lot of test files and everything. So for example, if you head over to this particular test file, the pre join screens, and you head over to pre join screen dot test dot typescript. So for the for example, this particular file or test file in here is actually mocking different stuff like the context that before. So you can just, you know, like, this is how you mock in the context, you go through the context, then you can just like mock the particular function, then mock it like before each particular test on the test 
suits in here and um you know you can like you know just like mark whatever this thing is going to be like resolving like a promise or whatever then later on you can just go in and use it inside of that to mark all of that so for me how i usually use jazz with vs code to get the best out of it there's two extensions i absolutely love the first one is actually the jazz snippets which gives you really quick snippets like you can just type in describe in here to do it describe uh maybe disco to do describe only a lot of scorecards and it's very very useful when you're running a lot of test cases every day and doing a lot of tests so i really find this really useful so if you want to write it this one is really really good the second one which i absolutely adore and have like always used it through my journey is the just extension from orta in here which gives you like a different stuff and it gives you a menu to run tests and it gives you like an actual ui to control and manage and view the different st tests you have inside of your projects so if you head over to um you go to like you know the testing here side you're going to find this testing icon in here right into it so i'm going to close this one uh, i'm going to find as soon as you open it you're going to find like collapse right there's uh, i'm going to find like different test explorer and you're going to find you know you can filter out the test and everything in here and inside of this one is going to give you exactly what are your tests it gives you uh, if the test failed or not if it test passes what are the tests that are passed and for example if you head over maybe i want to go to the menu bar instead of it there's two files in here inside of it there's a menu menu.test and inside of it there's a test case which called the menu components and you can go like uh you know that this is the test suite sorry and those are the test cases and if you actually click on this it's going to take you to the file and particular test case you are actually uh trying to mention if you go to this as well maybe when i go to a different one like a different describe they are actually put together really really well and it can allow you to easily go through the hierarchy of like the different tests and this is actually really Really, really useful if you are having a project that has tons of different tests like this one it has different different tests like the server test the src the front end plenty of stuff so it can easily like figure it out for you to actually go through your tests you know what are the tests and you can easily search the test in here and most importantly you can run specific tests and you can easily find out so for example you click on this one it's only going to run this particular one it's going to give you this really awesome ui like oh this one is actually testing maybe you want to run a particular test case like this one test case you can do it maybe when i click on this particular test case as well it's going to go ahead and run and do all of that I absolutely adore this extension it's absolutely amazing so the configuration for that particular extension that i absolutely enjoy using so if you head over to your json file your settings file in vs code you're going to do just the auto run you need to make sure like you put the watch falls on save which means on clicking on save when on a test file it's going to run the test src file what that means is actually if you save it on the actual test file like if you save right here this will trigger the rerun for that particular one and also if you save it on the source file which is the actual menu bar file and you click save that's going to rerun the watch as well and it's going to only run it for that particular file or it's going to only run that particular test file or test case which is absolutely amazing it saves you a lot of time and it's it's really good with when doing that and also on startup in here which means when you start up the project when you start up vs code run all tests to make sure that you haven't broken anything since yesterday and to keep everything on track and i really love with this one as well it keeps testing every single time like this basically like every single day i get up and like boot up my machine and start working and start my day off well this is actually very very simple so anyway guys thank you guys for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed this quick introductory kind of like you know advanced intermediate kind of video that tells you the best practices to use jazz with react and vs code so hope you guys enjoyed catch you all hopefully in the next ones